Hey everyone! In this video I will show you all the parks that were created for stage 9 of our timeline park contest. In this stage all the players had to uh, create a new themed area or expand a themed area they made in an earlier round. Alright, let's get started with the first story. The first story is from Astro Third. Sailors from distant lands have arrived in the confluence. These nomadic people have been searching for a place to settle for many months. The sight of the confluence impressed them greatly and they approached the king's messengers with an offer. They requested land on which to settle. In return they would share their knowledge of shipbuilding and seafaring. The king saw an opportunity. These people had proven capable. They would make fine subjects and their knowledge of shipbuilding would allow him to expand his realm even farther. He agreed to their terms and granted them land along the beaches of the south. The citizens of the confluence immediately became infatuated with the new arrivals. Developments in the area took on a distinct nautical theme. The king was pleased. Another segment of the wild land became his. Alright, the next story is from Bags, <laughs> which is also a kind of a history lesson. Alright, let's go. Chapter 9, 1990 end of the Cold War and a tribute to the Chinese state circus. In the late 1980s a revolutionary wave took place in Eastern Europe. It started with protests in Poland and later in Hungary, East Germany, Czechoslovakia and Romania. In East Germany the fall of the Berlin Wall took place and with that separation by the Iron Curtain that had divided Europe into East and West had disappeared. The revolutions in Eastern Europe that had led to the fall of communism and the disintegration of the USSR. By reuniting the European halves, a, a lot of U Eastern Europeans tried to find a better future in Western Europe, where a big technological revolution took place. This translated in Western Europe that a lot of attraction parks were opened and they often introduced dark rides. This trend was based on the new Disney parks that were opened in the mid-1980s in the US. The Elysium Hippodrome board had seen this opportunity of migrants coming to Western Europe and also wanted to install a dark ride. Moreover, the financial crisis had stopped and it was financially attractive to invest in a park once again. Until this moment, the park had themed all its attractions based on circus acts and wanted to stay within that vision. Coincidentally, in the same period of time, the Chinese state circus was doing a tour in Holland and were known for their martial arts acts and lion and dragon dances. It triggered the park to honor their Chinese colleagues by theming an area in the park area into their own interpretation of Asian building style. For this operation, the location at the end of the park was most suitable for expansion. The Earl had not been so lucky in the crisis and was eager to sell this piece of land close to the windmill. The planning required to move the kitty horse and the statue of horse. Lucky. Once again. The statue now has a final position and looks over the large lake which had been named Lake Lucky. On the location at the outer end of the park five Asian food stalls and three new rides were introduced in Asian style which were dragon dance and Ninja Trick House in 1989 and finally the fully themed Dark Ride Spirit Train opened the season after. Alright, the next story is for my park. James had used up pretty much all of the land that was surrounded by the railway. But he saw there was a lot more potential for expansion. Most profit from the Dirkling family orchard was at this point actually made by the amusement park. So once again James decided to sit with his brothers to plan for another expansion of the park. They finally agreed on expanding the park with a new area themed to a mine in a forest in the American Old West. This would actually be the first time that pine trees were to be planted on the orchard grounds. The area got two new rides, of which one was a heavily themed mini golf ride and the other was a freefall tower. The freefall tower was quite unusual in that it first pulled guests up before dropping them into the ground, into a mineshaft. 
Once again, the capacity of these rides was not great, but James still hoped that they would attract many new visitors from the surrounding areas and provide fun for people of any age. Okay, the next story is from Fidwell. One eye catcher was not enough for Dyna Park, and the higher ups continued to demand bigger and better expansions. After the two parks merged, the theming between different areas has not been consistent, so the park designers added a new ancient Roman themed area to help tie things together. Not satisfied with just a theater, splash boat and fancy fountains, management quickly constructed a new wooden coaster to draw even more thrill seekers. Meanwhile, the previous park owners have had enough. Little Slugger's staff is finally suing Dynagas on grounds of mismanagement, environmental destruction, negligence, and worst of all, destroying the reputation of Lil Slugger's good name. Unfortunately, Lil Slugger's lawyers saw that only a freak accident could put the park in any real jeopardy, and Dynagas seems to have everything under control for now. Alright, the next story is from Herbert. Ahn Dung got answer from James Dirklink, whom he had asked how to proceed to grow Duong La. James told him he needed to include a themed area in the park. This was another advice that seemed difficult at first, but after having great success with the Sky Screamer, Ahn Dung thought long and hard about it and decided to theme an area to modern Asian architecture and urban gardening, with big artificial trees as the highlights of the new area. He called it the Glowing Gardens, and since the past years were very successful, it was time for another big roller coaster. Andung contracted the American manufacturer Ro Rocky Mountain Construction to build a hybrid coaster, which were all the rage in theme parks across the world. And since the park did not have a true family coaster, he spent some more money on another coaster, designed in the likeness of the old Schwarzkopf Jetstar coasters. An Dung was very excited how the new area could be, would be perceived by guests and critics and already started to think about how he could expand the park even further. Alright, the next story is from Jean-Pierre. As the park continues to grow, the park got out of its economical problems for the last month, well most of it, and were able to build some new things. The park thought and thought what they could should build for the guest. They already had two very intense coasters and a great kitty coaster and water ride. The park wanted to make another coaster to fully focus on the family side of the business. So they decided it was a very good idea to open up a new area of the park where the former steel company was located. But the park wanted to dedicate the plot of land to its owners and decided to theme the area to the steel company. With the new Mount Asana lift, where the, f where the former water tower once stood, they stroke land with the new theme. And this time it was th time for the rest of the area. Well, sort of. Most of the land is finished in this month of time, but there are areas which will come later, such as a whole new very small restaurant. What you can expect this month are three totally new rides, Copper Factory, a Mac Wild Mouse, which is themed to a copper winning place. Mind Pumping, a family drop tower designed into an old ASA SC warehouse. And the last ASA Steel Train Tour, which takes guests over the old railway of ASA SC and gives an insight into the beautiful railroad that was once used to transport coal and steel. These are operated by steam locomotives from the 1950 instead of the wind power airlocks that are used on the ASA trams. The park hopes that it can expand in the future, but it doesn't look very bright as the park has very little room left, and maybe that they even have to remove the parking garage and have to build a taller but smaller one. The park already had trouble to expand this month, and they are planning to finish the rest of the area next month. Hope you will stick around next month. Alright, then the next story is from R. Adrian, 1994. After a truly torrid time a couple of seasons ago, Southmouth Pleasure Gardens is remarkably back on track. The replacement observation tower has been a modest success and is certainly more robust than the previous, 
even if it's not quite so sleek. However, the main success story from last season has been the opening of the themed area Colorado Creek. Guests were impressed with the level of immersion and enjoyed the new rides. With an increased attendance last year, the ambitious plan for the popular themed area could be fully realized this season. Two major rides have been built. A large, pacey GCI co wooden coaster called Bighorn, named after the famous mountaineering sheep of Colorado, and Roaring Rapids, which is a fun water ride designed to get guests absolutely soaked. Both rides feature some of the park's best landscaping yet, with impressive rock formations and thick flora both being highlights. To help further the park's family offerings, the park has also set up another funny show, this time featuring a cowboy and a sheriff. Yeehaw! Although the majority of the old port area has now been built upon, a smallish plot of land remains in the middle of this corner of the park. The management team, as always, are keen to maximize what little space they have and have optimistically promised guests yet another themed land. However, the design team have got a huge task on their hands to create a whole new themed area with more great rides in such a tiny space. Okay, then the next story is from Ricardo Bodo. Thanks to the hotel, more and more guests kept coming and coming to the park. That's why John McWardo decided it was time for a new themed area. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to find a suitable theme for the area. Luckily, Maria was looking through her father Ricky McWardo's old boxes and found a box labeled Athens. Inspecting the box, she found hundreds of pictures, some old coins, a fridge magnet and some various other souvenirs. She then showed the box and its contents to John, who immediately began designing the new area, inspired by Ricky's trip to Athens, but with a mythological twist, as they knew that's what their father loved. The area called Meropis features a complete arena with a show about Perseus battle, a dark ride that tells the story of the dog Odysseus, and a disco coaster themed to the legendary shield Aegis. Alright, the next story is from Savvy Adam. Making waves and splashes with the largest addition yet. Since the water slides that were added last time were so popular, an entire Caribbean themed water park has been added. Calypso Cove, which brings along three new exciting slides. Big Bahama Mama, a giant family tube slide which will wind through almost 300 meters of tube. Wipeout Waves, a huge half-pipe surfing experience with 30 seconds of riding the waves. Cayman Cannonball, zip down a 13 meter high slide into a giant toilet-like bowl where you spin around until you fall out of the bottom. Category 4, the renamed East Coast Hurricanes Tower Racing Slide. This is sure to be the best and most exciting addition yet. Alright, next up we have the Volcano Park from Soap and Butter Sandwich. Using the material that was left over from the dam channel, they created two small islands in the center of the volcano and connected them to each other via rope bridges. They dubbed these new islands Volcano Isles, in reference to the volcano that the islands are in. Unfortunately, space was tight on both islands. So fitting things in was a real challenge, but they prevailed. On the first island, they built an eye-catching ferris wheel, and on the second island, they decided to build a large new roller coaster. Due to the limited space, they thought it would be a cool idea if it went between the two islands. So they built a launch towards the first island, where the track weaves through the pre-existing structure, but the still felt it was too short. So they added a very small extension to the ride, where it went round the sides of the volcano. The new ride was very exciting, and the Wastelanders loved it. The coaster also took up a rather thin plot of land between the buildings and the coaster, so they still have the top corner for another big project. But what the big project is, no one knows. Only time will tell. Okay, then we have the story from Swag Diddies. Partnership over. Oli Bolly has sent his legal team to take back his land from the fun fair. You can find them harassing swaggers near the warehouses. 
Luckily, longtime friend Wyatt T. Hex has come to Tiraton's aid. He has finished working his way through law school and plans on defending the fun fair. Hopefully this dreadful situation doesn't cause the park to close down. On the bright side, the new castle themed area of the fun fair has opened. Joost, a Vekoma family boomerang, brings the castle to life as it weaves through the stone towers. The King's Horses is another new addition to the park lineup. It gives children the excitement of riding a real horse without the danger. Titterton was able to buy a swinging ship from a traveling fair at a discount, and it was permanently installed near the back of the park. Dr. K. Link is back at it as well. He's working with Bob Scoops and Squire Tont in the back corner of the park, figuring out what to do with the undev developed land that the train travels through. An exciting or terrifying event is in the near future for Swigger Titterton. You decide what crazy circumstance he must live through. Well, and here the reviewers uh, for the park could actually choose one of the following four answers. A. Oli Bully's legal team wins their first case in court and gets the fence off land rewarded to Oli Bully. B. The closed down grocery store is finally demolished and Tiritan purchases the additional land for development. C. The park naming competition is finally completed and the fun fairs are renamed to and here the reviewers could fill in a name and D a staff member is killed in an unfortunate accident well I guess we'll find out in the next uh, stage uh, which one of these uh, options were chosen by the reviewers okay the next entry is from the shack after facing the publicity fallout surrounding its copyright violations the money started coming back into the park. Mr. Fantastic decided that it was time to open a new area, a western area. He wanted to show off many cheaply built dead traps. I mean, built some amazing rides for the guests in the western area. He built a mine train coaster, which isn't a ripoff of any railroad or mountain or anything. And he built a log flume because they are cheap, I mean fun. He also realized that this area hit his growing backstage hazards quite well. Additionally, to stop guests complaining, I had to put in a few temporary rides by the Egyptian Saifa area, so please understand the twist and the crooked house aren't actually there. Alright, we are nearing the end, and here's the story from Trumavarium. Retribution at last. Hopefully this is the last time we'll see the old factory owners on these grounds. They stormed in with their alleged industrial action. Land Lake's very own lawyer made sure the law enforcement saw the other side of the coin in this matter. The police came to arrest the old owners, as they are now facing charges regarding the tremendous and negative impact on the lake they infected. The water treatment operation from a few months ago came in with the results, and they were not showing any indication that the old owners of the site even cared a bit to reduce or neutralize the pollution imprint. The arrest is taking place as of now, and Lake Land is open for business as usual. The band that was supposed to play on stage today sadly got postponed due to the happenstance. The stage is being set however, and we can look forward to a spectacular show once they arrive. There's a new area made in the park however, it's located on top of the hill, and it's conspicuously spooky as the raids have been set free and can roam freely within the forest. Alright, and here's the final story from Seklar. Seklar's idea for the observation tower was a big hit. Guests were very pleased with this new addition. The sight of the park and the planes from above is simply breathtaking. You could even see the city of Nosgoth from up there. This gave Seklar an idea for the next edition of the park. A themed area that resembles the old days, when Nosgoth was still a small town. When knights roamed the land and wooden shacks were the norm. With this area, he could attract even more families to the park. As a first addition, he decided that the drop tower would be a great site to get the attention from the visitors. A big building reminiscent of the mining shafts of old. To bring even more nostalgia, he built a small tavern where guests could drink and eat. Dodgems in the style of an old knight were also added so that the guests could relive the old battles told in legends. 
The final addition was the mini golf course. This was a nice change of pace for the guests and families who want to relax after a whole day of thrill. Alright, those were all the parks and stories for uh, stage 9. Uh, next up, of course, is stage 10, where all the players have to uh, yeah, build something in the park which the park is uh, lacking. And after that, uh, there's just a few rounds remaining where uh, players can uh, add uh, another spectacular attraction and then finally finish up the park. So yeah, I'm very excited to see how all these uh, players uh, will finish up the parks. Alright, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing all these creations and, uh, and uh, hearing their stories. And I'll see you again in the next video. See you later. Mm -hmm.